In my last video, we talked about Nigerian pupils and students here in the UK, and we discussed whether or not the data shows that they outperform, generally speaking, African pupils who descend from other countries. Many people fairly justifiably said to me, well, why haven't you talked about Igbos? Igbo people, because in my video I talked about Yoruba students and we looked at the London Borough of Lambeth. And some people were saying, well, what about Igbo peoples? Are they not Nigerian? Fair comment. And what I hope to do in this video is to first of all explain why I didn't particularly focus on Igbos in that video and also hopefully give you some tools, some guidance or some advice, some suggestions about how best to approach data, how to select what data is good data, solid data, and what data is uh, somewhat not, not so good. One of the main sources that I used in my video is this study from the London Borough of Lambeth. It's called the, Education, the Educational Achievement of Black African Children in England. July 2021, written by Feisa Demi, who is an academic who's done a lot of studies in this in this area. So this is what we I based I took a graph which was based on this table here. So people have rightly pointed out, well, what about the Yoruba, the the Igbo? And it's a, it's a good point because if you look at if you look at Igbo and you compare, look at the average percentage in 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 those years from 2009. 100 percent of them got five A stars to C GCSE, including English and maths. And then all going through all those years, 2010, 11, it's 100%, 80%, 76%, 86%, 100%. This is year by year, 75%, 67%, and so on and so forth. So overall, you'll see that indeed the average over all of those years is quite a bit higher than both the than both the Yoruba and the Tree Fanti and the Somali. But one of the first reasons why I didn't include the, 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 those figures is when you look at the more recent years. Look at the more recent years. This is one thing, first of all. You see that, all right, yeah, 100% in 2009 and, and uh, 2013 got that grade. 67% 2015, 77% 2016. But then look at 2017. For only 42% of the Igbo speaking students, pupils, who uh, took GCSEs in Lambeth in 2017 got that five A stars to C's. That's among the lowest out of all of the groups. You know, they went bumped back up again in, in, in 2018. That next year's cohort, 77% of them got five A stars, to, which, is the, which is the second highest in that year, aside from Creole speaking, interestingly. Uh, but then it went down again in 2019 to 56%. So, one of my rules of thumb is that when you see wild fluctuations in figures, that's a warning sign. That's a warning sign. Why? Because it might suggest that the numbers of people that you're talking about in that group are, are very small. And if the numbers are very small, then the variations can be quite wild. Let me, let me, go, to, let me go to the next page, the, the, another study. Now, this study here is also from 2021, and it's called language diversity, English proficiency, and attainment in Lambeth schools. This is where I got the data about the languages that, that children spoke in, in uh, Lambeth. The numbers of Igbo speaking children, the children who spoke Igbo primarily at home in Lambeth are very, very small. You're only talking about, you're only talking about 173 in 2021. That's the overall children in all, in all of Lambeth. Obviously, not all of those children are at GCSE age. The majority of children will not be at GCSE age. And they said that that's the paper says here of the 411 black African pupils who took GCSEs in 2019, 21% spoke English at home, 22% Yoruba, 13% Somali, 9% Tree Fanti, 5% French, 4% Igbo. Now, you can do a very quick calculation. 22% Yoruba, that is around about, what's that? 80 students, about 40 tree fanti speaking, uh, around what, around about 50, 60 Somali speaking, Igbo 4%, so that's only around about 20 Igbo speaking children. And then it goes lower and lower down the line there. Luganda, for example, 1%, which means that about, about four, four. When you have a larger data set, you can make conclusions about, from, 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 that, from those data that are more robust and more thorough than data sets where there are only a small number of people. And, and that is why I didn't include the Amharic speaking, the, the Tigrinya speaking, the Lingala speaking, the Igbo speaking, the Creole speaking in my analysis. When I first came across this data, which is probably in around about 2013, and I saw that the by that point, imagine we didn't, 
we didn't have anything further than 2013. And I saw that the Luganda speaking pupils were 100% of them got, you know, 5A star, stars to C GCSE. And I was like, oh my gosh, basically, I, like my people, the Baganda, the, the Bagisu people are basically cousins of the Baganda, the Baganda. You know, we're, we're all intermarried with them and our, our, our traditions of origin are very, very similar. I believe that my people are said to be the kind of elder elders to the <laughs> to the baganda shout out to my Oli Oliotia to my to my to my brethren my, my baganda brethren so I was like oh cool look at that we're so intelligent we're doing so well and but then it's like you look at the rest of the years there 2016 17 18 you know a third of Luganda speaking children in those years got that got that pass mark same with the Creole enormous fluctuations the wild fluctuations all those other all those ga as well like I said big fluctuations at times uh, Lingala, you can so you know, big fluctuations. Generally speaking, they they you know their average over those years is quite low. But there's some years there where there's 90%, 2019, 58%, which is higher than the Igbo in, in 2019. Do you see what I mean? So so you've got to be very, very careful when you're making generalizations based on small data sets because those small data sets will mislead you that's why I, in most of my videos I talk about data that comes from the office for national statistics actually mainly because they're talk, they're looking at they're looking at thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people hopefully what I've shown you is this first of all I hope I've explained why I didn't include the the the, the, the figures pertaining to Igbo speaking children in Lambeth it's because the fluctuations are too wild which I think is a product of the fact that the numbers of 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 lamp of Igbo speaking pupils is too low. I want to say as well. Sometimes people come to my videos and say, "Oh, you haven't included this. This data doesn't control for education. This data doesn't control for you know language. This doesn't control for class. This doesn't include age. This doesn't gender. What about this? What about that, guys? Me, one man, Ellie, are making these videos. I have two small children. I have a wife, a beautiful wife, two wonderful small children." who I'm raising, by the way, I'm gonna make a video soon about the importance of actually parents actually raising children, but I'm raising them. And I also have a full-time job, nine to five every day. I don't have much time to be doing these things. I'm staying up late half the time, looking at studies, editing videos, you know, doing these things, finding time when I can. That's why I do my videos every fortnight, not every week now, because I simply don't have the time even to put out the level of content that I'm doing now. You're getting university level material here from me for free it's a good thing i enjoy doing this and i'm not doing it for the sake of earning a living i would love to i would love if this stuff would bring an income that i could start to scale down the amount of work that i do for my day job so that i could start putting in more solid research and you know more more product more higher productivity with these videos but i can't and let me just put the challenge out to you guys as well if you want better data if you want better analysis, if you want better statistics, for example, if you want me to start doing freedom of information requests so I can get more, more, more information, if you want me to start going and visiting people, interviewing people, put your money where your mouth is. I, sh I send a shout out to my, my, you know, those, those of you who do support me on Substack or Patreon, Patreon, shout outs to you, those original, original G's, you know, um, Tito District amongst others. Big shout and big respect to you from morning, from, you know, a long time ago, you've been supporting all those who've supported me in the past. Those of you who've bought me a coffee, shout out to you guys. I, I, I honor and respect you and I should make more of an effort to sort of th to thank you for your support. Um, but th that's very, 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 very few people do that. So just, I'm just, let's just keep it real. You're getting a very good level of material, a really good level of, uh, of product, of, of content here for free. Um, so just bear that in mind. Do you know what I mean? This is, <laughs> this is, this is the world that we live in. You get what you pay for, if you like. But anyway, take care. I hope this has been useful. I hope this has been interesting. Um, have a good day, and I'll speak to you soon. Peace.